Tom here from Lawrence Systems. We're going to dive into rsync running on FreeNAS. rsync, if you're wondering, is a wonderful tool for synchronizing data, but no, I'll just tell you right now at the beginning of the video, it's not as fast or as efficient as the ZFS replication, which I have another video for. But there are special use cases where rsync may be what's needed and it solves problems, sometimes especially when you're transferring between non-FreeNAS systems. So we're going to show both how to transfer from one FreeNAS to another using rsync and also how to transfer to like a Linux system using rsync. But first, if you'd like to learn more about me and my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hire us button right at the top. If you want to support this channel in other ways, there's affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel, including a link to our Patreon if you'd like to become a Patreon supporter. We also have a swag store where you can get shirts and other items that are for sale, and that changes from time to time what's available and what's not, so go ahead and check that out frequently. And finally, our forums. If you'd like to have a more in-depth discussion about this video, suggestions for new videos, or just reach out, say hi, and talk tech, our forums are a great place for that. All right, now back to the content. We'll start real quick and say, what is rsync? rsync is an open source utility that provides incremental file transfers. It's been used for a long time by me and well in the Linux community as a whole to synchronize two different directories together. So if you have a path with a lot of data in it, and maybe some of the data is over here, but you're not sure if all of it is, rsync is a great way to synchronize those two paths. And if there's just a single file added over on the other side, rsync goes, oh, we got this and we'll bring it over as well. So it can do incremental transfers. It's really smart, has a lot of options, is easily scripted. Now it can be run over SSH, which is goes beyond the scope of this particular video. And it's also not necessary to set up these modules inside of FreeNAS in order to have it working over SSH. Uh, it's just an extra parameter. You can Google how to art sync over SSH. Maybe I'll do a video in the future, but it's pretty well documented how to do it. We're gonna talk though about how to set up rsync inside of FreeNAS and how you can have two FreeNASs talking together with rsync or even a Linux system to pull that or actually it expands beyond that and uh, we just we've seen it where other NASs that do have rsync abilities and you want to sync free NAS to something rsync may be a tool to go to for it so like I said it has some special use cases now first I want to thank tech supply direct for supplying us with this server right here this is that Dell R730 I have a review video I'll leave a link to below on there um, and if you're interested in getting a server like this from tech supply direct I do have an offer code uh, gives you 10% off on here so this is a reasonably fast nice server it's an R730 with 64 gigs of RAM, plenty of storage, uh, plenty of fast storage. But the first thing we got to do is we're going to go to services and we're going to turn the rsync module on. And if you want it to start automatically, there's a checkbox for that. Then we're going to go and configure it. TCP port 873 is the default for rsync. Second, rsync does not itself have any security. It is now exposing port 873 and any of the modules we tie to it for anyone who connects to it internally. This is why one, it should not be publicly exposed across the internet unless you have some special use case where you want people to get those files. And there's sometimes development times when you go, maybe I do want people to be able to pull this and I want to publicly share it. But by the way, it does not have security. As I said, I just want to make sure that's really clear. Don't just forward port 873 out to the world unless it's something you want to potentially share with the world. Next, we have to add a module. So this is our source system right here, 3.212, like I said, and we have the options of read and write, write only, read only, and we have this module. And we're gonna share some photos. So we'll call this module photos and uh, some photos. Whoop. There we go, get it spelled properly. If not, someone will point out that I misspelled something, which is fine. And I have some photos right here. So here's the path on this particular system. We're setting it to read only because I want to share this with another free NAS. I want to be able to sync the files, but I don't want anything written back to it. So I don't want it to be any rewrite uh, sense. Uh, user, we're just gonna go with root so it has the high level permissions here, but you could match them to whatever I have assigned here. I'm not even sure what ones and I don't feel like looking. But root and wheel will be fine because root has permission to, you know, go over everything. You can limit the number of connections if you want. So how many rsync connections come there? We're going to leave it at zero, which uh, zero should leave us at the max. Zero is unlimited. Host allow. 
Now, while it does not have any username password type security, it does have implicit host allow or host deny. So I could say only allow certain systems or deny other systems. And you can put networks in there as well. Uh, and there's some other auxiliary parameters we're not going to get in. But if you have certain advanced use case information, you can pass those parameters along. But that's it. That's all we got to do to set the module up and hit save. So now we have name photos, comments some photos. We have the path. We have it set to read only mode. We have the permissions. I'm able to look at it with root and wheel, which means I can definitely get all the files. You probably want to match them, but for sake of this demo, I'm not going to match them to whatever permissions are actually on those particular files. But that's it for our source system. Now let's go over here to FreeNAS. And what can we do with that? Well, let's go ahead and pull that data. So we're going to go, what's the path? First, we got to decide where's the data going to land. And uh, I made a folder called rsync YouTube demo. Pretty straightforward. User. What user permissions are we going to do on there? We'll do root. Why not? Remote host, 192.168.3.212. So that's this IP address here. That's the system. Now, FreeNAS actually supports the encapsulating it over SSH. Uh, like I said, it goes out of scope of this, but it does have that built in. But you do have to, in setting it up from the command line, is probably the easiest way to do that. You do have to have the... FreeNAS making the request have installed SSH keys on both systems. So you have to have this having the private key and then a public key pushed over there. Like I said, it goes out of scope, but yes, it is supported on here. Our sync module name. Well, we called it photos right there. So we'll just paste that in. Photos, direction, push or pull. Well, we can't push because that's read only. So we definitely want pull and we want the data to go from the source system to 12 to 3.8, no problem. And we're going to say, pull some photos. Pull some photos. Schedule a task. Hey, why not? This should run every day or every hour, however you want to do it. Now, these are great for things like if you just are dumping some files somewhere onto one free NAS and you want to rsync to another free NAS and you don't want to go through the entire setup like I did where ZFS syncing, but you go, I just need those files that get dumped into this folder uh, copied over to this particular system. This is an easy way to do it and you can set it for however long you want. The first time it runs, it copies all the files and it's incremental every time thereafter. So however you want to set it. And these tasks, unlike uh, the ZFS replication, are completely rsync tasks. There's no replication of snapshot data or any snapshots required for this to work. Uh, recursive, yeah, we want everything if there was subdirectories. Uh, Timestamps, compress it while it's running. Um, have to save them temporary from each updated file holding directory until the end of the transfer. These are all default option. It's fine just to leave them all at default, but you can you know, also choose delete. You may want to do that. And what that means is uh, if something is deleted on the source, do you want it deleted in there? Like I said, a couple of the options that you have, but we'll leave all these um, at the defaults because we just want to get the data from where it is over there. But you can see it's easy enough to change these. So we do that. It's pending, but we can force it to run now. We don't have to wait for it because there's no snapshots. We can just say, go ahead and run. Task started. And it'll be done here really fast. So we'll just actually just force refresh the page. There, it's done. View the log. Unfortunately, it doesn't say any logs are available for that. I don't think there's any logging options that you can even really turn on. Maybe there's some extra parameters, but you get the idea. It runs. It doesn't give you much of a notice. It'll give you a notice of failed, and it gives you success when it's run. But now if we go over uh, to this system here in our, our sync demo, so let's go ahead and log into it. Make the screen slightly bigger. Our sync YouTube demo. There's those. All right. And we'll just log into the other system. Root at 192.168.3.212. And we see we have the same things here. Now let's go ahead and delete something. We'll rm that picasa.ini file. So now it's missing from here, but it's here. So let's go ahead and turn on the delete option. So we'll hit edit. We'll choose delete, hit save. Now, if there's a deletion on one side, it'll do again. So let's run this again. And it instantly turns to success because it already copied it once. And now we see the Picasso file, it disappeared. It's missing from this destination system. And if we were to remove more files and 
it would also do the same thing. You're kind of getting the idea that it's delete syncing. So actually let's uh, rm, rm img17 star, there we go. We deleted anything that begins with a 17. So now all these have 18s and 19s in them. And these ones still have all the 17s when we list them. So we'll run it one more time. Go up here, and now they're synchronized and all the ones with the 17 done because we have that delete function turned on. So pretty straightforward how that works and how you get them synchronizing. So it's really easy to set up. Now, the final thing is, how do you sync it with like another non-free NAS system? And this is more the use case. I mean, our sync will work perfectly fine between two free NAS systems, but what if you had one that's not free NAS and you want that module and you have some other type of system where you need to synchronize? Well, let's go ahead and do that. Exit, exit, exit. All right. So I have this little script set up that says rsync free NAS YouTube demo. It's rsync dash av dash dash delete dash dash progress dash dash stats 192.168. 3212 colon colon photos. Now this is the module name right here. So we gave the module the name photos. So we do photo slash, that means grab everything in there. If there was a subdirectory, you could actually uh, go with one of the subdirectories underneath, but we're not worried about that. We just wanted this one right here. Where are we gonna dump them? Home Lawrence TMP. So if we go in here, look in uh, TMP, LS, nothing in there, it's empty. Let's run that real quick. And the progress and stats is what gives you these little stats right here. So we can see that it pretty quickly went in there. So we go and look at the TMP folder. There's all those files. Great. Clear it and let's run it again. And you can see the files haven't changed. Now, what if we go into TMP and we remove some files here? Now, again, remember it's read only on the other side. Well, I removed all the files. And it just runs again and synchronizes again. But what if we accidentally goofed up a couple like RM, IMG? one nine star. So we still have files, we don't have all of them. Well, same thing, it's just going to rsync and synchronize again for those files and now they're all back. Now, this, like I said, will work in both a read-write direction. You could use the module and do it the other way and push things from this system using rsync over. But as I stated in the very beginning, there's no security when you're doing rsync inside of here. So um, the system is just leaving port 873 open. It does have the ability for, you know, host allow, host deny on a per module basis when you're doing this. So use it at your own risk, use it and making sure that you're doing this on a secure network and make sure that the data is okay to be exposed. So it can be very handy for getting files across, especially when you're setting up a new system or migrating to free NAS. Uh, some other NAS systems I've run into, some of the weird ones that I've seen people have, they have rsync, but they don't have a lot of other tools for synchronization. But the good news is because free NAS supports pulling from an rsync module, you can use free NAS to pull from another NAS. Also, if you have some other NAS you want to use as a backup, kind of the opposite is true as well. Where I've seen it where people set up a module, an rsync module, they restrict it to another system. And you can have that system pulling data from FreeNAS as a backup because, well, not all other NASs support things such as uh, ZFS replication. So it's a great tool to use. I really like it. It's not what I'm going to use generally to synchronize to FreeNAS systems. That's why I did the replication video. That's going to be the more ideal um, way to do it. But if you just have some data you need synchronized between another system, um, or even if you want to make something easily available and you want to pull some type of project files that you keep stored on your FreeNAS system, but you want to easily sync to another Linux system with a quick script, this is an easy way to do it to be able to pull whatever those latest files are from it. So uh, that's all you got to do to get these set up. And you can set up as many modules as you want until you run out of space to do so. Um, so if you want to add more, and remember, each one is also two modules aren't named the same. You can have multiple modules pointed at multiple directories. And uh, that's it. All right. Thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general. Even suggestions for new videos, they're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. 
Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.